Welcome to another sermon from the Lewis Church of Christ. And now, here's Mark. Today is, uh, it's August the 5th, believe it or not, and because it's a new month, we are starting a new sermon series for the month of August, and the sermon series is called Lead. Lead. What I want us to do in the next uh, two or three weeks is I want us to focus on some words of Jesus that focus on leadership in the church. Now, there's all kinds of leadership levels in the church, and and most of the time we're going to be focused on the leadership team level of the local church. But here's what I'm convinced of. If you are really following Jesus, you will lead like Jesus. I mean, if you're really following him, you're going to lead like him. And it could be at work, it could be at the home, it could be in the church. It's somewhere, if you really are following Jesus, you will be leading like Jesus. In the New Testament, the pattern is always the same when you talk about church leadership. In the New Testament, the church was always led or guided by a team of leaders. Now, uh, in the New Testament, that team of leaders, sometimes they were referred to as elders. Sometimes they were referred to as a team of shepherds. Sometimes they were referred to as a team of pastors. Sometimes they were referred to as a team of bishops. The word bishop, uh, it, it's just another word for leaders. Now, I personally, when referencing the elders or the shepherds or the pastors of a church, I tend to refer to them as the leadership team of the local church, uh, the leadership team. And uh, just, uh, you know, sometimes the, the, the leadership talk gets lost in our culture when we talk about shepherds because we're not too familiar with shepherds and, and what they did and, and do. Uh, so I, I like referring to as the leadership team. And a lot of what we're going to talk about in the next couple of weeks refers to that leadership team level. But there's all kinds of leadership levels in the church. And all of us uh, can benefit from this series. There's a very classic verse that I want to point to. Makes a lot of sense to me. I've put a lot of stock in this verse. And it's a leadership verse. Look at Acts chapter 14. Uh, I think it's verse 23. Paul and Barnabas are tag team church planners. Tag team church planners. They're out there starting churches. And I want you to see um, one of their basic leadership philosophies. Look at this. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church. And with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. Now, just that one verse communicates a whole lot about what I think we need to know about a church leadership team. Look at this verse. Let's just uh, pick it apart just a little bit. It's so powerful. There's so much compacted in this one verse. The first thing I want, want us to understand, that future leaders, the next round of leaders, are chosen by the present leaders. I just want you to get that. The future leaders, the next round of leaders, are chosen by the present leaders. Paul and Barnabas starting the church. They're the first leadership team of a local church. And they are appointing elders to take over as they they lead. Okay? That tells me that great leaders are always preparing for the next round of leaders. Leaders beget leaders. Leaders need to reproduce themselves. And if your leaders aren't reproducing themselves, I'm not sure they're very good leaders. And I I, I think we can see that even from this text. There's a second thing in here I want you to understand as we talk about a leadership team of the church is in the New Testament, it, it was always plural. The team was always plural. And they appointed elders. Got an S on the end, right? Plural. They appointed elders, plural. It, it's not wise to have a one-man show. It's, it's never wise just to have one person leading. It needs to be a tag team. It needs to be a team, plural. And, and new, in the New Testament, you will always find the, the words in, in plural. A team of elders, shepherds, pastors, plural. I think that's wise. This choice of leadership, if you look next, is so important, it better be accompanied with prayer 
and fasting. Prayer is talking to the Lord about this stuff. Uh, you choose. Fasting involved. This is a huge decision. This is so big. It requires prayer and fasting. Also, they ought to be, they, they better be committed to the Lord, right? That's essential. Better be committed to the Lord. And then finally from this, in, in whom they put their trust. The, the, the present leadership team making the choice for the next round better wholeheartedly trust this next round. Fully trusted. One verse, so much good stuff about how we go about choosing next round leaders. Now, here at our church, right now, presently, at the crossing, there are four members, presently, of the leadership team. Adam Woods, Carrie Price, Chip Vicchio, and myself. Now, one of our goals, as we uh, kind of come to a conclusion, when by the time we end our Beyond strategy, one of our goals is to have 12 guys groomed and serving and ready to be the pastors of this church. We want 12 guys on that leadership team. 12 guys just ready to lead us way beyond the, where we've ever been before. That's one of our goals in the next couple of years. By the time we end our beyond strategy, that's where we want to be. In fact, we want to begin the expansion in the next month or two. So that begs the question, who leads? Who's next? Who's ready to serve? Who shall, who shall we add to the team? Who do we choose? Who leads? Great question, right? Where do we go? Where do we find them? Where do, how do we train them? Who do we choose from the get-go? That's what I, where I want us to start today. Who leads? Now, in this series, this whole series, I want to choose a few of my favorite Bible scripture references that talk about and deal with church leadership. And I want us to dive into those texts. And I want us to allow the word of God to lead us as we consider the next round of leaders uh, for our church family. I want us today to jump into Mark chapter 10. Interesting story. Uh, befuddles my mind a little bit. A couple of things happening in this story. But look at Mark chapter 10. One of my favorite leadership passages. Here we go. They were on their way to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way. Now, I really feel like we could stop right there. We can say amen. We can go on with the next song because that's all you need to know. Jesus leading the way. I mean, that's the key to the whole leadership issue. It's so obvious Jesus is leading the way. Uh, but let's go on because, you know, Chip's allowed me about 30 minutes for the sermon time. So, they were on their way to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way, and the disciples were astonished. You spend a little time with Jesus, you will be too. They were astonished, while those who followed were afraid. Again, he took the twelve aside, and he told them what was going to happen to him. Now listen what he tells them. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said. The Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priest and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand, a, hand him over to the Gentiles <clears throat> who will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. <laughs> what? I mean, er, I mean, did somebody just slam on the brakes as we hit a brick wall? They ask, what? He just poured out his soul about the cross and they ask, what? No, they didn't. Yes, they did. And these are the candidates for the next round of leadership for the local church? Really? Um, <laughs> okay, all right. Let, we better keep going because 
That's frustrating to me. Look at this. James and John, sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. This sounds a little bit like our own prayer lives, doesn't it? What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. <laughs> you do not know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. <laughs> they don't know what they're asking. We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, well, tell you the truth. You will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right and left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they've been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. You know why they were indignant? I think that they were indignant because James and John beat them to the punch. They wanted those seeds. But anyway, at first glance, James and John do not seem likely candidates for the first leadership team of the church, do they? They do not seem like the most likely candidates we would choose. I mean, they are so totally insensitive to the needs of Jesus. They are obviously only seeking the best seats for themselves. And they are totally clueless about what's really going on. You see that? But they did have a couple things right. First of all, they were with Jesus. Second, they were letting him lead. They were letting him lead. That's huge. Because I'm convinced, I'm convinced, friends, that if you are really following Jesus, you will actually start leading like him. If you're following him, you will start leading like him. You won't be able to help it. You won't. And so here's this passage, and it's just, ah, it just indicates one of the things that's most important for me looking into church leadership. It is a must, friends. It is a must that church leaders of the local church, it is a must that Jesus is leading their lives. It is a must. They don't have to be perfect. In fact, they may be clueless about a lot of things going on. But one thing that has to be true of anyone stepping into a church leadership position, it has to be true that Jesus is leading their lives. Amen? It has to be. It has to be true. The first, first and foremost, the most important thing is that Jesus is obviously leading. That they are great followers of Jesus because great followers of Jesus can actually become great leaders for his church. Is Jesus leading in their lives? Now, I want to share with you, kind of as a present member of the present leadership team of our church family right now, I want to share with you our list where we begin. This is the list where we stand. This is where we begin. As we start, hey, let, we need to expand. If we're really going to go beyond where we've ever been, we have got to expand uh, on a leadership level. We've got to expand that structure. So where do we start? I want to share with you our list. It's a valuable list to me. When you boil all of the Bible passages about church leadership down, you're going to come to this list for us. Here's the list. As we begin choosing the next round of leaders, uh, we're going to choose, first of all, people who will obviously love and follow the lead of Jesus in their life. They obviously love and follow the lead of Jesus for their life. That's where we start. It's obvious. There's a second one, though, I want you to hear, and that is simply this. As we look to expand, uh, we want to choose and we want to, we want to bring on the team uh, those who obviously are chosen and called 
and blessed by Jesus to lead other people. Now, I know a lot of people who have a high character and they're so for righteousness, but I'm not sure they've been equipped to lead other people. They're just a nice guy. That's all fine. I just don't know they belong in a leadership team. You need people in the leadership team who were blessed and called and chosen by Jesus to lead. And here's the point. At this church, I want Jesus choosing the next round of leaders, not us. So obviously, they love and follow the lead of Jesus in their life. And obviously, they've been chosen and called and blessed by Jesus to lead. And third, here, here's the third one. Obviously, they have a passion for and proof of being able to encourage others in their faith walk with Jesus. Obviously, they have a passion for and proof of already encouraging others in their faith walk with Jesus. Now, does, does that list make sense? Isn't that list, uh, don't you want that list to describe any that would be serving on a leadership team that would lead the church? There's our list. And I'm convinced that if you're really following Jesus, you're going to be leading like him. Leading like him. Look at the next passage, because this is where Jesus comes in with some great leadership uh, advice. Look at this. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers, leaders of the Gentiles, lord it over them, and, exer and their high officials exercise authority over them. They love their authority. They love to exercise their authority. Um, yesterday... We, uh, we have a German exchange student that we received Friday night with us for three weeks. Uh, Leah, uh, just stand up real quick because I want to embarrass you. She's blonde, she's from Germany, and she turns red. Look at this, look at this. <laughs> Leah is with us for about three weeks, and yesterday we said, hey, let's, let's, let's take her to the beach for the first time. So we went to the beach for a couple hours. Uh, so we went out to Cape Henelope, and we parked two vehicles because we can't get all of us in one vehicle. So we drove out, and, and then we all loaded up on my Jeep. We're going to drive out, right? Well, in order for seven of us to fit in my Jeep, well, a couple have to stand on the running boards, right? Um, I really didn't even move the vehicle yet. Mike is just on the running board, another boy on the other side on the running board, and I, like, pull up three inches right in front of the park ranger. And the park ranger, and I'm not making fun of him, he's doing his job, he's, you know, he's a great man. But the park ranger immediately flipped on his lights. Everybody around gets to see this. And then he gets on the loudspeaker. Anybody, park ranger's in here? You're welcome. The park ranger on his intercom, as loud as the whole beach could possibly hear, get on off that vehicle, either get inside or walk. I mean, it was loud. And I'm like, that was kind of rude and embarrassing. And I think he did that just to show his authority. But anyway, uh, rules of the Jesus, they lord it over. They lord it over. Not so with you. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first, James and John, huh, whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. I love that passage. I love the reminder of that passage. Who leads? Who leads in the local church? Well, I want to suggest that when it all comes down to it, let's, let's invite those to the leadership team who are just so obviously letting Jesus lead their life. I mean, when it comes down to it, that's all I need. I know Jesus is leading his life. That's all I need. Here's why I say that. 
Because if Jesus is obviously leading his life, I know Jesus will always lead toward three destinies. Let me give them to you. They're right from the passage. He will always be leading, first of all, to himself. Twice in the passage, Jesus calls the twelve to himself. He calls them to himself. He gathers them to himself. And if you are letting Jesus lead your life, the first thing that's always going to be true of you is that you're going to be led to him. You're going to be spending time with him. You're going to allow Jesus to keep reining you in and bringing you close to him. Yeah, you might be clueless about a lot of things, but just get close to him. He will always be leading to himself. Here's what else I know about Jesus and where he leads. He will always be leading away from selfish ambition. He will always be leading us away from selfish ambition. James and John, I mean, he got them, didn't he? He got them, and he's leading away. James and John, I don't want you to be concerned about this seat or this seat, the best seats in the house. You know what I want from you? I want you to serve. I don't even want you to have a seat. I want you washing the feet of those seated. He will always be leading toward himself. He will always be leading you away from selfish ambition. I love Philippians 2, 3, don't you? Do not be led with selfish ambition or conceit. Instead, consider others better than yourself. He will always lead to himself away from selfish ambition, and thirdly, he will always lead towards serving others in their faith walk. He will always lead. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life away. Isn't that cool? That's what he's calling us to. That's where he'll always be leading us to. And if these things are true of you, you are a great candidate for the next round of leadership in the church. What a great list. This is where Jesus will always, always be leading. So, regardless what leadership level you hold, whether you're a pastor or a parent, whether you're an employer or an educator, whether you're a counselor or a coach, whether you're a big sister or a big brother, I want you to follow the lead of Jesus for your role in leadership there. And you will be great at leadership. So here's how I'd like to conclude. And as we really kind of set the stage for this whole lead series, can I recruit you and can I encourage you to ramp up the prayers for the church leadership team of this church? In fact, I'd love for you to use a prayer prompt. In fact, anytime you drive by a church building, whether it be our church building or another church building, any kind of church building, would you use that as a prayer prompt to pray for the leadership of this church family? I'd love to recruit you and get you to do that. Church building, ding, I'm praying for our church leadership. Now, specifically, I'd love for you to pray four things. First of all, I'd love for you to pray, Lord, would you obviously be leading in every aspect of ministry at the crossing? Would you, Lord, lead every aspect of leadership at this ministry at this place? I would love for you to pray that prayer. Secondly, Would you ask the Lord, would you ask the Lord, fill this church with great followers of Jesus? Because if we have a lot of great followers of Jesus, we're going to have a lot of great leaders for Jesus. Fill this church, fill this church with great followers. Would you pray specifically, Lord, would you provide 12 great pastors for our church family? In the next couple of years, before we end beyond strategy, would you provide 12 great pastors for this church? And, and one more prayer. Would you just pray that the Lord would keep us safe from every evil threat from the evil one?
because he hates our church. This has been a presentation of the Lewis Church of Christ. We are located at 15183 Coastal Highway, Milton, Delaware, three miles north of Lewis on Highway 1. Our service times are 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday morning.